going, Tony? Good, you? Great, buddy. Great. Me? Oh yeah. All right, cool. Oh, oh, look at that! You got you have your very own flag. Yeah, and the hat. Nice hat, by the way. We just got it yesterday. Yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, nice. awesome. Thank you. We got a hat and koozies and like a wine. No, you didn't get koozies. You got this tumbler. Oh, a tumbler, right? And that cool wine carrier—that's mine. Yeah, I, I think that's yeah. My my wife, yeah. Yeah, you know, she's gonna steal all this stuff except for the hat. Guaranteed, right. it's happening. Yeah. <laughs> cool. So, how's it going? You've been uh, fishing a lot this summer. Yeah, this has been one of my better summers, especially with uh, the catch rates. I mean, my catch rates are up, so the DNR must be doing something right, right? I guess. I have no faith in. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I am. I'm beginning to. Uh, have the same faith i'm a little i'm a little jaded down here for my uh two month or, or my two week gag grouper season is uh kind of ridiculous so yeah in september like our slowest time of year and also kind of the slowest time of year for gag grouper fishing is when they open it so do they is this every year that they do that uh it has gotten shorter and shorter every year since i've been uh working in clearwater when i first started it was open all year and you could keep five per person okay yeah we're so we can keep five fish per person um king salmon we can keep five lake trout we can keep three so with a combination of the two you can't keep more than five so you can have like two king salmon three lake trout or vice versa gotcha uh, yeah um i mean we're allowed to keep a ton of fish just the gag groupers you're allowed two per person they got to be 24 inches yeah. and they're only open for two weeks that's crazy yeah it's pretty crazy how do you how, so like in the salt water how do you target grouper like that just because uh, you have certain areas or yeah, yeah they yeah. frequent certain areas certain types of bottom uh they gag groupers yeah. really uh like structure a lot more than red groupers do okay um you'll get pretty much all the ledges any kind of little wrecks and stuff like that will hold gag groupers okay cool as long yeah, as the not only fished a lot what's that as long as they're not fished a lot yeah they get a lot uh, of pressure if it's like a really known spot then good luck <laughs> so, you, so you gotta go over the edge you gotta go over the edge you just have to find places that most people don't fish yeah right you know right yeah up here we are we go out two miles and we're still i mean we're a little deeper than you i think at two miles i think two miles out we're about 60 feet or so okay that's uh, a lot more than here two miles out here you're in like 18 feet that's crazy yeah what's your water temperature right now 85 i think oh bath water yeah we're that's at cool. i think uh, that's cool for here this time of year is it really yeah wow yeah we're um we're at uh, i think about 72 and that's warm gotcha i think around this time last year or probably like the middle of august or so the water temp was around 100 degrees it was Whoa. 97 98 99 it was like killing a lot of corals and stuff like that yeah uh, this year it never got that hot it got up to the warmest i've seen it was like 93 or somewhere around there yeah but, but then we had our we had a hurricane debbie that came through and that cooled it off quite a bit and it's rained just about every day um since then so that really yeah. cools the water temp off a lot yeah ours is just the east went west winds east wind uh pushed the hot the warmer water out west wind pushes the warm water in so yeah cool yeah well, this so, is this so is, how a, do you this fish is for these lake trout and stuff like you're trolling for those things yeah so we're going slow right we're going like 2.7 is about perfect because you go okay. more than that you're you're not going to catch the lake trout they want it a little little slower gotcha. um yeah so we're we're uh they'll bite all these so we target really five fish so lake trout steelhead salmon brown trout coho there's your coho don't you know coho and kenosha yeah <laughs> so 
Uh, we we troll about uh, two point seven that will pretty much catch all of the fish that we target. Okay. Um, yeah. So uh, we use spoons. Uh, I wish I had some. I was thinking about that. Are they like flashers? Do they have like a treble hook on them, or are they they have a single J hook? No, just just a straight treble hook. Okay. Um, yeah, and then um, we've caught a couple, or even lost a couple that have straightened out the 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 hooks. So that that's a big fish. Oh yeah. Well, you're trolling and they're swimming, and if it's a big fish, it'll definitely straighten out a treble hook. Like you have no yeah. idea how many hooks I've straightened out in my life or broken off or yeah, you know. Now you use uh, a lot of sta- you pretty much have all stainless hooks, right? We're not allowed to use like stainless hooks. Really? Yeah, I guess that makes we're, sense. They're supposed to be able to corrode out if they get stuck in a fish, so. Uh, stainless steel hooks. I really, I've really never used. Um, most of the hooks we use will rust. You okay. Know, yeah. You got to keep them away from the salt if you want them to last. But our hooks really don't last that long. We get hung in the bottom a lot. We get sharked a lot. We get broke off. Yeah. I go through a lot of tackle. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. I uh, we ours our bottom is fairly sandy, probably just like yours. Sure. Um, we don't have any really rock piles or anything that we have to deal with. We there's yeah, sure. out of South Haven. There's a little bit of a shipwreck out there from like 1800s. So it's all wood, and it eats it eats uh, some gear, man. Ask me how I know. Oh yeah, well I know too. <laughs> I've caught the bottom. I've caught about everything you can catch. The whatever uh, reef or wreck we're over, we'll hang up in that sometimes. Oh. Like if I slow Man. down too much and one of my lines sinks a little bit and catches the top of a barge or a shipwreck or whatever's laying on the yeah. bottom, mm. that gets expensive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, we we troll about one point seven. Uh, I usually have anywhere from eleven to sixteen lines out. Um, we use planer boards, dipsy a hey, dipsy divers, eh? Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, I wish I, I wish I had some of that stuff here, but I, it's at the boat. That's um, okay. I was watching some people. Maybe was it Sassy Outdoor Chick? Do you know who that is? Mm-mm. Uh, she fishes up there somewhere, or I think maybe her son is a captain up there okay. on Erie. I think maybe or Michigan or something like that. But uh, I was watching one of her videos the other day, and they were using dipsy divers and lake trout fishing and doing yeah. all that. It's very similar to what we do for mackerel here. Like, there's not a whole yeah. lot of difference. Yeah. So you use underwater planer boards or something like that. Is what that you how yours work? Do dipsy you, divers well, go under the water? They do. Yeah. But I we use regular planer boards that do not go under the water. That just gets your bait out away from the boat, so you can yeah. run your lines. Yeah. yeah. And then we we on those we on the the planer board lines or rods uh we have generally what's either called copper or um lead core sure. and and what that does is the more copper or more lead core the deeper it dives so we have our shallowest diving baits out the furthest and then right. if a fish hits it goes over top of the deeper so ones. you're running wire lines yeah it's basically yeah. copper yeah, yeah, yeah. I've ran wire lines a bunch. When I first started fishing uh, here in Clearwater, uh, the captain that I worked for was kind of old school, and he ran a lot of stuff like that, wire lines, and um, he didn't really like planers. Planers are like the, you know, what all the kids were using. So Yeah, right, right. Um, but the planers work better. Yeah. In my opinion. Sometimes. And, and those, Sometimes. And those, are those metal down there? They're metal, yeah. Yeah, we have plastic. Gotcha. Yeah, I mean plastic would work, but we're trolling faster and stuff like that. It might they it might would break them, but no, they're just like a, a square piece of metal that um, has a little clip on it, and when it's engaged, it makes it dive down in the water. So if I'm using okay. a number three planer, I can touch the bottom with that thing in 50, 60 feet, no problem, depending on how and fast I, I go. Right? And how fast are you going? 
Uh, I'm doing, if I'm gag grouper fishing, and that's really why I would want it to be down on the bottom, or if I'm king mackerel fishing, like in the afternoon and the fish move deeper, like a lot of times in the morning, they'll come up to the surface and feed. And then yeah. it's still there. It's just, you know, 45 feet down and you can see it on your sonar, but they won't bite if the bait's not in front of their face. Right. You got to get it down pretty deep to get to them. So if I'm doing something like that, I'll slow down a little bit. I'll do like three or four knots. Okay. Basically five miles an hour. Right. And um, try to get the bait deeper. If, you know, and sometimes they won't touch it unless I'm doing seven knots. That's crazy. You know, so it really depends on what they're feeding on, how active they are. Like, um, I just try to vary the speed a lot and see, see yeah. what the perfect speed is, you know. Are, are, are you guys, are, are your fish water uh, uh, temperature sensitive? Like, will they, they bite? Be. Yeah, Absolutely. that's kind yeah. of, yeah. Uh, so our fish are mostly migratory, the stuff we're trolling for, like the king mackerel and the Spanish mackerel. Yeah. Um, so they come through here at a certain water temperature or a certain moon phase, I guess. And, mm. and, um, but all the fish, I mean, I think it's like that just about anywhere. If the temperature changes drastically in a short amount of time, yeah, um, it shuts the bite down, right? If yeah. it goes from, you know, if the water temp goes from like, say, 78 to 70 in a matter of a day or two, it's yeah. going to shut the bite down. Like it shocks yeah. the fish a little bit. In a couple of days, it'll they'll come back and start biting again. But it definitely makes the bite difficult. And scatters them a little bit. It does. Yep. 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 Same. And same here. Dirty and does all of those things. Yeah. 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 Cool. So, uh, how's the family? Family's good. Um, yeah, baby's uh, just about five months old. Uh, five months. Okay. I was like, man, yeah. he's not a year yet. No. Right. <laughs> yeah. I, I feel like he's going to start uh, driver's ed in a couple weeks, though. He's grown so fast. <laughs> <laughs> they really do. They grow so fast. Is he crawling around yet? He's not quite qu crawling. He's kind of oh scooting. God, so lucky. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I tell you what, he found his voice. Did he? he can, oh. His lungs and his voice. <laughs> Man, enjoy that short amount of time when they cannot run away from you. Yeah, right, right. Because soon it's going to be like, uh-oh. I know he was just here a second ago. Lost him. Yeah, where'd he go? Especially when mom's not around. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I feel like that could definitely be me. <laughs> that yeah. was definitely me. I'm like, oh, no. I know that that little thing is in this house somewhere but yeah oh he's yeah, hiding go... he's hiding in the dishwasher <laughs> yeah right <laughs> in the dog's crate yeah yeah you just never know just lock it's it that way the, you can stay in there. on top of the refrigerator i'll be ding dong <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah uh family's good can't can't complain there um kelsey my wife, she hates going back to work, um, but you know she she's a she's a, she's a, a art. Is she a What's teacher? That? Is she a no? Teacher? She's a nurse. Oh, she's a nurse. Nice. Oh yeah, she's but she's going back to work after having the baby. Oh yeah. Yeah. They all do. Yeah. They all do. <laughs> yeah. And then so it's now my slower season, you know, and coming up to where uh, in October I'm basically pulling the boat and putting the boat up. So. Um, nice. I'll be, what's that? That's nice. That, I mean, that means you get to have some, um, good bonding time. Exactly. Um, daddy daycare. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome, man. I enjoy that. That's like, yeah. uh, you know, something you'll never get back again. So mm, no. So, uh, yeah, she, uh, she hates going back to work. We thought about, um, we thought about, pulling the string up here and just going down there so I could use my yeah. license all year long and definitely could. Uh, no man but uh yeah it's nice up here it's not too warm I think it's only supposed it's supposed to be 81 today beautiful yeah so that's, that's nice. your overnight that's your overnight I'm sure 
It, it is, yeah. It's yeah. been uh, it's been raining here every day, like tropical downpours every day. All the ponds and everything are pretty much at the top of their capacity. Like so, yeah. by my kids' school, there's a huge retention pond there, and there's a couple smaller ponds. And every single day, those ponds are overflowing into the parking lot, and it's basically yeah. like the pond is part of the parking lot. I don't know where. Yeah. If it keeps raining, there's going to be some pretty good flooding here. So, so what scares me about down there is the gators. Because I feel so. I, I, no gators. I've never been afraid of them. Nah, yeah, I know, but I mean, what do you mean? you're a big well, boy. They're not going to get you. <laughs> yeah, no, but like, they might be like great. dogs or great. They'll try to get your dog. They'll try to get your child, but. Uh, you can teach your children that very quickly and they understand yeah. that, okay, there's something in there that's going to eat me. Yeah. And most kids, not all kids, but yeah. most kids are like, okay, I don't want to be eaten. So I'm going to be super vigilant to not be eaten. Right. And I mean, that, yeah, that makes sense. You know, and then there's kids that are like, nah, they're not going to eat me. And, and they did eat. Well, I don't really think that happens very often, but nah. possible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah. no, I, I'm, uh, we, we thought about that. Um, you know, she, she didn't want to go back to work so bad that she was like, you think we can make it down there? And I was like, wow. I mean, maybe. <laughs> no, there's no maybe. You definitely could. I mean, She's we're not going to starve to death. She doesn't want to go back to work. Yeah, she doesn't okay. want to go back to work. Um, well, I mean, I told her, I said, maybe you work three months and you do like a travel nurse position down there and then and then that's it. Well, do you know that the best way to make it as a charter captain is to have a wife that has a good job? Yes. <laughs> I, 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 I tell everybody I couldn't do this full time during the summer without her. Right. So. And like last year, I I uh, I basically worked all winter, um, doing construction and plowing the snow, but and we didn't. I didn't have to. It's just something that um, I did to kind of keep busy. Now I have other things to keep me busy. Oh yeah, you gotta get so, yourself a snow plow and just plow snow all winter. I have a bobcat that does that. Oh, nice. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> so. Very cool. Um, so, so what your season is over soon, huh? So when does it start? It starts in like, I don't May. know. May. May. Okay. Uh, April. I, um, so my boat will go in early April. Um, uh -huh. but a lot of people don't want to fish when it's cold. I mean, it's still, I mean, early April, we could still be dodging icebergs out on the lake. Right. Um, haven't done that in a few years, but um, usually they're all melted. But I mean, it, we very well be dodging ice, icebergs. Uh, and a lot of people don't want to fish in that. And that's some of the best fishing right then at that time. And then uh, I, I pull the boat uh, by October 15th, just because we don't have any water at the marina after October 15th, they close the marina down. Because it's I, I think it's silly. Because it's really good fishing uh, in October. Yeah, because they shut the water off. What do you, oh, why did, oh, because it freezes? It could, yeah. So oh, we'll yeah. have a snowstorm every year right around October 31st. Yeah, like around Halloween. I remember as a kid in Ohio, it was the same thing. Like I remember, Always. I, I remember uh, a couple Halloweens where we were trick-or-treating in the snow. Yeah. And we had to put like plastic bags on our feet and all kinds of yeah. red bags. Did your mom make you yeah. do that when you were a kid? Oh, hundred percent. I I really hated that. <laughs> yeah, I didn't care for it either. Because then your feet sweat. Oh yeah, and, and then <laughs> so what? What would you rather have them? Either uh, frozen and cold, or sweaty and they get end up getting cold. Yeah, that's exactly right. <laughs> yeah, so. Yeah, not a bad move for you moving down to Florida. That's that was that's always kind of been a dream of mine to go down to, down to Florida. And I think uh, 
eventually we'll be we'll be down there but yeah but my season basically october uh or i'm sorry april 1st to october there's some captains that will put in before april but they can be they can go down to their boat if they at least started at at least every day i'm i my boat's 50 minutes away from my house so i can't just run out there like every day so i mean i could but yeah i do i do in the summertime so well that's cool yeah. um yeah so you stay pretty busy uh doing that up there yeah so when school is out i i, I do two a day usually yeah it's like that here too if school's out man we're wide open if school goes back in it's like okay where did everybody go yeah and then you have the weekends you do the weekends right. um i have friday saturday sunday monday i have a double one of the days and it doesn't look like i'm going to get any of them in because it's supposed to be eight footers oh geez that's terrible yeah yeah so I'm fishing this weekend. I have a uh, Saturday and Sunday. I have a trip booked Monday. I think I'm going to let DJ run it because I'm trying to keep my guy busy. You know, I don't Yeah. I need him to make money and want to continue to work for me. So yeah. <laughs> if yeah. he's not making money, it's easy for him uh, to just try to go find something else or whatever. Yeah. And, uh, we're going to go to dry dock soon. I got a bunch of that kind of stuff going, going on and, um yeah yeah it's gonna be cool dry dock will be cool i think i'm gonna live stream that that would be cool i'm gonna i have a bunch of uh sanding and painting and stuff to do so i think people yeah. like the sort of thing oh yeah me and yeah they like they like to see the maintenance part of it but right. i don't think they would like the bill part of it they would not like to see the bill there is no doubt about that no actually since i'm gonna be I think I have a little valve issue on one of my motors. I think I'm going to probably pull the heads on one of my motors. It's and a redo or something like the uh, rocker arms are tapping or something like that. Yeah, it's it's actually kind of backfiring when I get above wow. 3000. So gotcha. I think one of the valves is stuck open and that'll scare you a little bit. Oh, yeah. I, I warned my customers like, hey, just so you know, it's not exploding. It's not gonna <laughs> explode. I don't think anyway. So yeah, yeah. So uh, I I normally will pull my boats out every two or three years because we get a lot of growth here. I don't know. Oh do you yeah. Keep your you keep your uh, boat in the water all the all of the summer. Yeah. Yep. And then we we have like a blade like of paint. Yeah, do you get like zebra mussels or like what do you get up there that grows on your? Uh... Oh yeah, moss. Like we get a beard. Yeah, same thing with we us. Grow beard. Yeah. Oh. So we yeah, just we'll get and pull it out and power wash beard. it. Gotcha. Yeah. That's what it we just do. has copper in it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we pull it. So we haul out. They use like a big lift, you know, big sling lift, yeah. and uh, pull the boat out, put it up on blocks pressure wash it, sand it all down, and put primer on it, paint the bottom. This year I am going to, um, I think I'm gonna paint the hull at, while I'm at dry dock. So I think I'm gonna try to spray that with uh, all grip. Yeah. Or all craft or one of those kind of deals. And uh, yeah. that's gonna make my boat look really nice. Yeah. But as soon as I paint right to the, to the rub rail, then I'm gonna have to paint the whole damn rest of the boat. You know, oh, yeah. you paint right. one part and then you're like, oh my God, the rest of it has to be painted now because that part's super white and everything else isn't. So yep. really just opening up a can of worms, but it, it gives my guys something to do in the off season. Sure. Like I can keep them busy painting and doing some stuff like that to make a little bit of money when we're not fishing. So, yeah. um, you know. It's a struggle here in the winter time sometimes. So you say every two to three years you pull it out? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. I have a diver. I feel, that it. Yeah, I was going to say, I feel like it would have to be scraped at least, get that. Uh, I have the them on a monthly, monthly schedule right now. Oh. Sometimes it's hard nice. to find a diver. Like the divers, it's kind of a weird job. It goes. 
you know, you'll have a guy for a year and then you're like, I don't know what happened to this guy. Like, has anyone right. seen him? And he just like falls off the face of the earth and he's not a yeah. doctor anymore or whatever. Yeah. And, uh, so um, right now I have a guy that does it once a month. He just go, comes in and cleans it and fixes the, um, puts new zincs on. Do you guys put zincs like on your running gear and stuff like that? Yeah. yeah same kind of deal. Yeah. Um, we do a lot of stuff in the water like that, though. Like, I've changed out props in the water. Uh, mm. uh, I've taken, I've actually taken the drive shaft out before in the water. Just stuff it with. And taken the shaft up. Uh, last year, one of my captains hit a whale shark. And. Um, Good night. Yeah. It, well, it bent the prop. And you couldn't oh, yeah. see it in the prop. I pulled the prop off, and I'm like, well, it looks normal. And then you take it to the prop shop along with the shaft and along with everything. And they're like, oh, yeah, the prop's out. And it was just yeah. making the boat vibrate really bad. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, sometimes you got to be careful. The worst is like at night, running at night. It's like that yeah. anywhere you run at night. I mean, I was when we were in uh, North Carolina, we were up on uh, Lake Fontana up there. And I could not imagine running that lake at night because the entire time we were there, there are like full size trees floating around in that. Oh yeah, we're uh, yeah we're a uh, we're a river. We have so after storms, like you got to be careful. We have to deal with a bridge, and technically, as you know, I mean they can't impede our traffic, right? Like navigable waterway, but they do open up from six a.m. to midnight every day, every half hour. So we kind of plan it so right. i can't i can't start really anytime before six well right. in july six it's pretty light out but like right. right now six is dark as all get out and if there's a big rain we really have to be careful because it pushes all sorts of junk i mean i've had buddies i thank god i haven't had any issues with that but right. i've had buddies run into trees i've had buddies run into telephone poles right. um yeah that'll put a hole in your boat yeah, especially when they're deadheaded. Yeah, if you put a hole in a boat that big, it's a couple less than a minute. It's going to be on the bottom. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. So it's the I'd same thing in the Gulf. I mean, I've seen. We have a lot of rivers running into the Gulf of Mexico. Obviously, it's a very large body of water, including the Mississippi River mm -hmm. and a ton of other smaller rivers. So. You, there's a possibility of seeing all kinds of shit. I've seen shipping containers. I've seen boats, just random boats upside down floating. Yep. Um, I've seen huge trees and stumps, like a stump the size of a car. Yeah. You know, if you hit something like that in the middle of the night, it's not good. You're no, you're you're, you're yeah, you're putting your life jackets on. You are definitely, yeah. Uh, that's not a good feeling. <laughs> no. 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 <laughs> so do you guys get beavers up there? Uh yeah, we get beavers. Yeah? Yeah. Are we are we are we are we gonna dive into that? Sometimes we trap beavers. <laughs> Sometimes beavers trap us. Gotcha. Now, you know, I don't have a whole lot of experience with actual beavers. Right. Okay. So do they, they just dam up like a little Creek or something, right? Yeah. So what they'll do is they'll, if they hear water, it's all uh, hearing. If they hear water running, uh -huh. their mission is to stop it. Oh, weird. Yeah. So my dad actually has like 80 acres and there's a little Creek running through it and, gotcha. and he gets beavers all the time. Huh? Does he, uh, can he trap them or do something? Because I mean, that like ca could cause some issues, right? If they're like damming up your Creek and yeah, those damn beavers, man, I tell you. Flooding um, or whatever. <laughs> yeah. And it's in a swampy area. It's ac it actually wouldn't hurt it that bad where Not he's too. at. Um, I don't know about way upstream. Uh, if, um, <laughs> golly. kids <laughs> nowadays, I tell you, um, but yeah, we he has a guy come in and trap them. I mean, I think they're worth quite a bit of money trapped. I've heard that. I have definitely heard that. And then we just take a big old backhoe and just 
tear it out and it's like, like a big whoosh of water whooping it up so those yeah. ponds that they make do they get fish in them and stuff well yeah i mean so gen so the, like his little stream that runs to a big lake we fish that lake all the time for crappie yeah. bluegill bass so they'll come up there i mean that's fresh water so there's yeah. all sorts of different bugs and all sorts of different critters so they come up in there and feed that's pretty cool so that might actually benefit the fishery a little bit to have some of those beaver ponds and yeah i don't know the deal i don't i don't mind it and he doesn't really mind it either i think he does it because there's a lot of blueberry farmers uh and and i think it floods their fields gotcha that makes sense yeah yeah, I wondered about how much. I mean, they have to cause a lot of damage. Yeah, I, I don't. I mean, it's in the middle of his like acreage, so uh, it doesn't really affect us. I know that my brother, we'd get ducks on it. My brother would hunt them, the ducks and stuff. But oh, I never got it. into. It. What's that? Gotcha, duck hunting. Yeah, I never got into it. I'd like to do it. I never have before. But uh, I have a couple buddies that do. It sounds like a lot of fun. Like getting, yeah, you don't have to like be quiet or anything. That's well, the fun I think part. I it. just like the idea of getting up at like three o'clock in the morning, and when it's cold outside, and going out and wading through like waist deep water and freezing your ass off, and yeah. um, maybe getting a little touch of hypothermia. Yeah, and all that stuff for like a critter that really at the end of the day doesn't taste all that great <laughs> no i don't think so either um I the best so. way to eat those damn things is wrap bacon around it bacon oh, wrap. And, Hold on. yeah and cream cheese bacon and cream cheese duck okay yeah interesting Poppers. i've had i've actually had duck and goose jerky before have you ever had that yeah that's not a bad way problem is is that uh in those in the duck breast and goose breast that is pretty much all you can eat is right. always uh some shot left over and you bite uh, down on that yeah. i think i did that once and that just ruined me so you got a got one on your uh in your teeth that's no good yeah, yeah that'll break a tooth for sure oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> i've never uh, i've me. never tried duck hunting i would like to try it just to say i did it i have some friend or i have a friend that goes over to um arkansas every year in duck hunts and i guess they have like a huge migration route there and i mean they get their limit like every morning and it's just yeah. these pictures of all these ducks i don't know what the hell they do with that many ducks like i i don't i, I don't know how you can eat that many yeah i don't know my my brother moved from from michigan to oklahoma just for the duck hunting Oh, and he, he he was sponsored and everything. He's passed away. He passed away last year. But um, he uh, he was sponsored and everything. And uh, so I don't I don't know. I just that's too much, too much. Ugh. That is Especially a lot. You, do you uh, do you like football? Oh yeah. So you're a yeah. Lions fan. I'm a Lions fan. I like. Fan um, a, what's that? Viking? You're not a Packers fan. No. Nope. <laughs> okay. Nope. Or no Chicago. Fan either. I'll be ding dong. No. Okay. No. We used to be in your guys' I, division down here. I I have been to so many different games. Yeah. Uh, here in Tampa Bay, of like Tampa Bay and Green Bay and Tampa Bay and Minnesota, Tampa Bay and Detroit, mm. um, Tampa Bay and Chicago. Like the year the couple of years that we were in the playoffs around when we won the Super Bowl back in like 2001. Yeah. Um, actually, we weren't in that division when we won the Super Bowl, but we were the year before that and the year before that and the year before that, we were in like the NFC Championship game. But I remember going to games and watching uh, Brett Favre and Warren mm -hmm. Sapp like go at each other the whole game. They'd be like jawing each other and yeah, uh, really, really good football. Oh. That was a lot yeah, of fun. Warren Sapp was a load. Oh, he was. He was a beast. Man. And Brett Favre oh. was, you know, just. Brett Favre. Yeah, yeah. Oh. He would, like, get hit by Sapp and then get up and talk shit to him. Talk, and, oh, he would. You know. he, 
Oh yeah, I got you. <laughs> we, we, and then come back a, and throw a touchdown, you know. Around that time, we had a guy uh, by the name at quarterback by the name of Joey Harrington. Oh, yeah, How are you going to be is. big and bad named Joey? Call me Joey. <laughs> Joey. That reminds me of like Joey from Full House. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> Just, you don't seem intimidating. Yeah, no. <laughs> I remember Joey. I mean, we had um, uh, Brad. Wait, who was our quarterback? Brad Johnson that won the Super Bowl. Yeah. You know, that was like his best year I, ever. Uh, ever. I mean, our, our defense yeah. won the Super Bowl. Let's be for real. Yeah. Uh, Mike Allstock. Monty Kiffin's defense won the Super Bowl. Monty Kiffin wasn't there, and oh no, Monty Kiffin was there, but uh, um, I think that John Gruden coming in and like revamping the offense really led to us being able to win that Super Bowl. Yeah, Trent Dilfer. <clears throat> Trent Dilfer is another one that was a Bucks quarterback, and he got traded to Baltimore, and he won a Super Bowl or or two in Baltimore, but the defense won. Yeah. Yeah, right, 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 right. I think Baltimore is going to be tough this year. I think I think they're going to be the uh, team to beat this year. There, I, you know, if they yeah. if they could ever get their passing game together, they would probably be a lot better. Yeah, hundred percent tough division though. Um, yeah, you, you know, you got Pittsburgh, Baltimore, Cleveland, and um, who else is in that division? Buffalo. No, 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 no. division is Miami and New England, yeah. um, Cincinnati. Yeah. Right. So those are all potential playoff teams and they got to all play. Each other. No, they Cincinnati definitely. might not be. I think they are. I mean, they got Joe you Burrow. Think so? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I think Burrow and they still have Jamar Chase. Like they're, they're going to be, yeah. Oh, yeah. you know, they're going to be up there. Uh, they're they're going to be close, if not in the playoffs. They're going to be in the close to being in the playoffs this year, and it'll probably yeah, come yeah. down to like at the end of the season, a division game or something like that. That really right. decides it. Um, yeah, I mean, being a team in that division, you got to play all of those other teams twice, and I mean that's yeah. tough. And they're all pretty much rivalries. They all really want to get each other. Yeah, and that starts tomorrow, man. It I'm starts excited. tomorrow. I'm excited. I'm ready. Yeah. I'm um, I'm a huge Michigan fan. Who's playing tomorrow again? KC and Baltimore. KC yeah. and Baltimore. Oh, that's going to be a good game. Yeah, and then there's a Friday and Saturday game. So it's, there is. That's Friday right. Packers. So tell me this is I don't know if you know this or not and I don't, but I'm very interested in this is um Taylor Swift still dating Travis Kelsey? I I don't know. I'll have to ask my wife. She's all. She's up. Yeah, I don't know. I think I so. Her voice. I know. I have an extra voice. It's me. I I know. I I don't know how we're gonna dub that out of our podcast, but. Jeez. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Well, just get. She might as well just get in the picture. She just should. Jokes. I know. She might as well have like a, a camera there. Uh, yeah. A breakup agreement arranged for September 28th. <laughs> oh shit. Okay, so she is still dating Travis Kelsey. So how do you feel about all that? Do you feel that that is taking away from the football, or you just don't give a damn? I don't give a damn. <laughs> I don't um, so, so I so whenever anybody jumps on the boat, I always have a spiel. You know, like hey. Uh, what would you guys like to listen to? I've got, I've got the, all the music. The only one I won't play is Taylor Swift. And I swear to God, everybody's like, thank God. I don't want to listen to Taylor Swift. <laughs> I'm like, I I'm actually good. don't tell anyone, but sure. I actually like a couple of Taylor Swift songs. I'm telling everybody. Oh, yeah. Don't tell anyone. I'm going to know who told everyone. If everyone knows <laughs> it's me, I'm the problem. <laughs> Um, no, I mean, it's not like my most favorite music, but, um, there are definitely, definitely not Mexican OT. It's not the OT. No, <laughs> Florida, Florida's pretty good. That one's pretty good, but it's probably just cause it says Florida in the song. And I'm like, Oh, she wrote a song about us. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, isn't that about like Destin area? It is. Yeah. Yeah. So, but yeah. It, it's Florida, it's the same thing. Right. 
that's the Redneck Riviera up there. Have you ever been to Destin? Oh, every year. Yeah, you go there every year. Yeah. Oh, that's we're going. Cool. Yeah, we're going. So I'm going to Clearwater. I don't know if how many people know this. Well, but I'm going everyone. to. I'm going to tell everybody. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I'm going to Clearwater area. Um, let's see, March 20th. March 20th. Okay. For a fishing excursion uh, with a friend of mine. Okay, cool. Uh, on, on the 21st, which is a Friday. And then I think I'm going to stay there until Monday and flying home. And then uh, you're the friend, by the way. I, I figured as much. <laughs> yeah. And then um, my wife and I on Wednesday are driving to Destin. Well, Santa Rosa Beach area. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's uh, beautiful up that way. I mean, I honestly would live there, like up there around Destin in the Panhandle. The only thing that I don't like as far as what I do, I can't really – those guys don't fish very much in the wintertime. No. You know, because it's so it's cold up there. It's way colder yeah. up there than it is here. It actually like freezes and all kinds of icky yeah. stuff. Like that up there. So I try to stay away from that sort of weather when I'm like all the time. Yeah. <laughs> well, I keep telling my wife like, hey, let's go further south and stay further south. Yeah. And um, I mean, if you, you know, know even if we were higher, like go to South Florida, bro. That's where. No, you know, I mean uh, just for vacation. Oh, I thought you were talking about moving. Oh, I'd go to I'd go to key like key, any of the keys. Yeah, I really that's thought about we. That's up. where we probably would end up. But yeah. yeah, so I mean, every year we try to go to the go to Key West. That's where we got married and everything. Um, uh, we're not this year, but. But yeah, I told her, I said, you know, if we're driving 14 hours to Destin, why don't we go two more hours south and not so much west? And we get, it could be the difference of 10 degrees warmer. But so then she's like, well, there's no west. Oh yeah, you betcha. You betcha. You betcha, <laughs> Mike. Sorry. Um, okay, so I've only been to Key West once and I had my child with me. So you've actually been to Key West childless. Right. That's dangerous. That, last time, uh, in December, uh, we went and my wife was pregnant. Kelsey was pregnant. Okay, so you had a, a designated driver. That's nice. A uh, designated. We walk. <laughs> we walk. Okay. <laughs> or golf cart. Yeah. <laughs> it's a pile of fun. Even uh, there is a pile of kids down there. Yeah. I, I was just. I've been there it, once. My kid was two. Yeah. We actually watched a football game in Key West. Remember that, Heather? Uh, what was that place called? I don't know. Jacks or something? Something like that. Hmm. Yeah, it was a Sunday because Kino's was closed. Oh, yeah. Key West is very, uh, very interesting place with all the roosters and the yeah. all the things going on there. There's a lot going on there. There is. Yeah. There's a lot uh, of history there as well. There is, yeah. Yeah. I, I we love it um when we got married though it was uh s the only day we got the only day we were there that it was like above 70 was the day we got married really? i know cold it was chilly what yeah it was 50 the, the first two days we were there it was 56 and 57 then it went to like 60 mid 60s for like three days and then that it went to, unusual. yeah. And then it went to like mid seventies the day we got married, and then the day after it was like seventy two, and then we were leaving that day. So how long have you guys been married? You guys got got married when down, down in Key West? Three years ago. Oh, nice. Yeah. Cool. And you're both. Are you both from Michigan originally? You're like. Uh, yeah. Well, my wife uh, is from like the Flint area and she okay. went to Michigan State and graduated there. And then I just, I'm from this area. That's Flint's where you're not allowed to drink the tap water, right? I wouldn't. <laughs> you, what, I mean, what happened, what happened with all, with the tap water there? There's lead in it. Is there, is it because of the pipes they used or the solder? Yeah, or yeah, yeah. Did yeah. anyone ever get in trouble for that? 
I mean, it happened, you know, uh, a billion years ago. So I don't think so. Interesting. Um, yeah. So did people actually have health issues because of that? Yeah, I think they, uh, a lot of kids were uh, coming up with autism gotcha. uh, and stuff like that. And they kind of pointed it at uh, the tap water. Gotcha. So that explains a lot about Michigan, honestly. Oops. You betcha. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, it's funny, though, because if you drink like Nestle water uh -huh. I have right here, right here, this right here, Ice Mountain water, sure. uh, it is from a spring in Everett. Gotcha. But that's and different that's in like tap water. It is different than tap water. Yeah, but you drink it coming out of the ground. Yeah. I'm sure there's no chemicals in the ground there at all. Zero. <laughs> I mean, Cleveland's not any better. I think back in the 60s, yeah. their like, river caught on fire or something. Right, sort. right. Yeah. I mean, pretty much the whole, pretty much the whole Northeast up there is like, you know, polluted to hell because of yeah. industry, although there's not as much industry there as there used to be. So maybe it's not quite as bad. Right. Yeah. The, wa the water's polluting the rest of the world now. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I always w wonder, like people eat so many fish out of Lake Erie and I'm like, yeah, Lake Erie can't be the cleanest lake in the world. It has so much industrialization around it. Yeah. I mean, look at, look at Lake Michigan. You have Gary, Indiana, Chicago, yeah it's um, all the harbors right there uh milwaukee is a bad polluter oh yeah south haven's great though south haven's great no pollution there no, no pollution come fish all you want <laughs> eat all you want <laughs> i mean every every freaking river on the east coast not on the east coast but in the midwest runs into the gulf of mexico so there's yeah. actually um, a dead zone in the Gulf of Mexico that's like some some years it's like the size of like Connecticut. Yeah. Where it's just pollutants from the Mississippi River, fertilizers and herbicides and industrial yeah. runoff and stuff like that, like pollute the water. They get huge algae blooms and it, it takes yeah. all the oxygen out of the water and kills everything. Yeah. Is that where like the red tide comes from? That's a good question. Um, yeah. The red tide comes from quite a few different variables, which are very hard for people to really pin down and determine. So yeah. there are there are a lot of people like around Florida that think that red tide is caused by fertilizer. And most likely it is like nitrates in the water and nitrates and nitrates. And that's what that algae feeds on right it's a dino right. red tide's like a dino flagellate it's a link single cell organism with like a little tail and it creates yeah. like a neurotoxin as it grows as a, a waste product so if you get a huge it's typically always there in the water but it's not at a high enough concentration to affect anything but if you get a bloom of it and it goes it overpopulates basically it pretty much kills everything around it it kills the coral it kills the bottom it kills all the fish and the little single cell organisms it, it wipes everything out um so in florida we have a huge phosphate industry here and mm. i personally don't know what is the cause or what the blame of red tide is but there are yeah. there are definitely camps like uh, captains for clean water and stuff like that that feel that the phosphate industry causes red tide. They feel that the sugar cane industry causes red tide. Um, we have a huge sugar cane and agricultural industry here in Florida as well. Um, like most of the fruits and vegetables that you guys get up north in the winter yeah, time oh yeah. come from here, right? We grow tomatoes yeah. in the winter time. We get our 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 um, strawberries in February or in January. So yeah, um, 
you know, a lot of that is going on, but all the runoff from that stuff gets into the Gulf of Mexico, gets into the Atlantic Ocean, and it spawns algae. Yeah. Well, and on top of that, I mean, like you said, you touched on it, like everything pretty much goes into the Mississippi. I mean, it's we have a direct line from Lake Michigan to the Mississippi, oh, yeah. and then that, that dumps right in. And, all of that I water, mean, every pollutant from the middle of America is going into the Gulf of Mexico. Yeah, basically the Rocky Mountains all. Yep, pretty much all. No of bueno. No, no bueno. It's not that great for water quality, but the water quality here is really good. We're a long way from the Mississippi River. Yeah. Um, right. You can it usually see, settles you can by that. On satellites, like if you see like the Mississippi River Delta, um, you can see where the polluted water is at or where the fresh water is going in. It's definitely a different color, different temperature, different everything than the rest of the water. It's like yeah. you'll see like a line of blue water and a line of like mud water. Yeah. It's pretty crazy how they don't mix very well. Yeah. Have you ever fished, uh, speaking of Mississippi, uh, have you ever fished uh, Venice, uh, Mississippi? Nope. It's like, it's like Venice where they, kind of, uh, yeah, Venice. that's what I meant to say. Port, uh, no, not Port Aransas, that's Texas. Um, what is the port? Port Fushan. Hmm, I that's where all those guys fish out of the tuna fishery down there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, where they go out to like the, oil rigs oh yeah i i used, oh. i don't really know any guys that fish there for a living but i know guys that have worked out of fushan at, on uh uh crew boats that transport crew and materials back and forth from the oil rigs yeah and those guys i mean i, I have a buddy that hand lines or he used to he doesn't do it anymore but he used to hand line yellowfin tunas Ooh, they were allowed to bring fishing gear, but he like snuck a spool of fishing line and he would put gloves on and hand line the things. They're like, you know, 85, 100 pound tunas and he's hand lining the things. And, he... and they fight. Oh, yeah. No, they don't want to. They don't want to die. No. So that. we were puzzle piece. a bunch of um, you got puzzle pieces going on. Yeah, I just got a puzzle piece. Uh, uh we have a bunch of captains that uh, every year we go somewhere. Like we've been to Lake Erie a couple times. We've wow. been down to Key West. We've been down to uh, other parts of Florida. And uh, we were supposed to this year go to Venice, Louisiana to fish some of those oil wrecks and everything. That's fun. But yeah, somebody had to go. Somebody had to go and be pregnant. That. Ah, uh, yeah. You got pregnant? Yeah, I did. I'll be ding dong. Well, maybe yeah. next year. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, and it's a pile of fun. I mean, we just. Yeah, you guys. A bunch of captains. To, you guys need to let me get in on that. I'll pull up for sure. Yeah, you want in? Yeah, hell yeah. Let's do it. It's I a lot of fun. fun with that. I've, uh, yeah. I've wanted to go out there. Um, it'll probably happen here eventually. Yeah. And uh, get all the tunas. I mean, they catch all kinds of cool stuff out there. Tunas and wahoos and... Snapper, even. Yeah, oh, yeah. Well, the red snapper season's not very long, so... If you're not there at the right time, it doesn't matter yeah. how you catch you, though. Yeah. That's like here. Like, we can only keep them so long. Yeah, but that's another place that gets super cold still. Mm. Absolutely. And it gets cold here sometimes, but... Um, I think like a typical February day here, it's in the seventies, fifties mm. at night. Um, yeah. So, I mean, it, it, you know, we talked about going further South, but I mean, a, we're going to be driving, so we're going to have Grady with us. So we don't want to drive somewhere for, you know, is this, can you guys hear the lawnmower? No. Okay, good. Um, he's my neighbor's mowing. They're not very well. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> So, uh, I, so we're going to have Grady, so we're not going to be able to go that far south, you know, 12 hours, pretty, pretty much max. And then, sure. um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, 
when even if it's 65 in Des or Santa Rosa Beach area, that's still going to be warmer than what we came from, probably in the 30s. I mean, if it's 65 so, there, it's probably 80 here. That's what I mean. Like, oh, I want that. <laughs> Um, no, it, it's nice. And then if you get farther south, like that's why there's like peacock bass and all that stuff down in South. Yeah. It just never freezes down there or very, very rarely. And right. uh, those fish can't really survive here very well unless there's like a, a heat source. Like if there's a spring fed lake or something like that where they're not going to get down to freezing. I mean, one, I, I think once the water temp gets below like maybe in the 50s or low 60s for those fish, they're in shock and they lay on their side on the bottom. And if it stays cold like that for long, they will die. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I, uh, so will I. Me too. I feel that. <laughs> yeah, I definitely feel that. Um, I've been down, so the first couple of times I ever tried to peacock bass or even Oscar fish, I went down to like the Tamiami Trail. And I always had, um, I always had days off when it's super cold in the wintertime, right? It's right. like, you know, the coldest day of the year and I'm down there trying to peacock bass fish and they don't like the cold so much. The first one I ever saw was laying belly up in a canal, frozen. Like uh, the the uh, the temperature killed it. Yeah. And I'm like, well, I know they're here. They're just so cold that they're not going to bite. Right, right, right. You know, and then the day warms up a little bit. <clears throat> all the other the little Oscars and the uh, the um, cichlids and all that stuff start biting because it like warms the water up a little bit. You know, just from the sun and. Uh, the Oscar fishing down there is a lot of fun. If you take like some worms down there, it's it's kind of like bluegill fishing, but they're yeah. like, a little more aggressive. Yeah. Do you eat those? They are good to eat. I've tried them a few times. They're, there's definitely better fish to eat, but yeah. uh, people definitely eat them. The meat's kind of a little bit yellow looking. Jeez. Yeah, so that's a little weird, but yeah, that is odd. it fries up white. I yeah. had to try it at least once. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, I so a lot of people are like, oh, you probably have a pile of uh, fish in your freezer, you know. You, you know, I don't, I don't have one fillet. Really? Yeah, no salmon. I like, I don't care for it. I don't yeah, eat it. That salmon, much. I got gotcha. I'm not a yeah. huge salmon fan. Yeah, fun to catch, but oh yeah, I like uh, it's well, it's kind of like king mackerel here. A lot of people are like, oh, kingfish, it's mackerel, and I. I normally am not a huge kingfish fan, but when it's fresh and you like fry that stuff up the same day, yeah, it's super good to eat. But what I really like to do with it is smoke it and make fish yeah. with it, and it's so good like that. I bet the salmon would be good like that as well. Yeah, we smoke it. We make salmon candy a lot with it. And that's what, what I do with it. Uh, just so a bunch of sugar. Um, you brine it. It's okay. Just, a bunch of sugar, bunch bunch of salt, uh -huh. uh, some water. Put it in a Ziploc bag or container. Brine it. Yeah. Rinse it off. Put more sugar on it. Put it on the smoker, and that it creates like a little hard candy shell. Uh, you can sure. almost tap it. Yeah. And uh, it, that's that's pretty good. Yeah. Um, that's or but if you make like a dip out of it. I know a lot of people you do that with the king mackerel. Yeah, yeah. Um, you don't want to use a whole lot of sugar, um, but so with that, the king mackerel are really oily, right? Yeah, yeah, and that's same thing with like lake trout. They're super oily, so a lot of people smoke that. This is and, the best thing for smoking. It keeps it from drying out. Like once that's exactly smoked, beautiful. Yeah, you can pour the coals to it. Oh yeah. And, give it the beans and it doesn't it doesn't dry out and then and that fat is what holds that smoke flavor so yeah. and it's good for it's good fat so i mean it's really good for you as well all those yeah. like uh oily fish like mackerel and salmon and lake yeah. trout like they're very healthy to eat they have a lot of like good amino acids and stuff like that in them that white fish don't have Right. Yeah. Three, that's right. Fatty acids. Yep. There's, there's a boat, uh, in 
my marina that's called the Omega-3. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. Have you ever heard of Escalar before? Escalar? Yeah. Mm -mm. So it's a type of fish that looks similar to a king mackerel that live out here in the Gulf of Mexico, and they're deep water fish. Okay. They're like deep sea fish, basically. Sure. And they use them a lot for like sushi. Hmm. But they have so much like uh, fatty acids in them and fat in them that if you eat too much, um, oh, they call them oil fish as well. Okay. Um, it messes with your digestive system really badly. Hmm. And uh, yeah, you'll you'll be sitting in the bathroom for quite some time. Yeah. Right, right, <laughs> if, right, if you right. eat those things. <laughs> Uh, um, I heard beaver's pretty oily too. Really? Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll have to um, we'll have to check it up on that. I, you know, I, I, I don't know how oily it is, but I assume as like a mammal <laughs> that lives in the water, right? That it would be very oily. Yep. Um, but those those uh those escolar are cool looking fish. If you get a chance, look them up. Yeah, so what I mean, are they like uh like a torpedo looking fish? Yeah, yeah, they look similar okay. to king mackerel, just a little uglier. Okay. All those like super deep water, well not all of them, but a lot of them are not very pretty to look at. You're like, Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> like what the hell is that thing? Yeah. It's like a monk um, fish, like Chilean sea bass. Have you ever seen that on a menu? Yeah. That's one of those but it's not a it's not a bass though. No, it's not. Have you ever? They just call it that because it sounds cool on a menu. Do you know? Yeah, what, have you ever seen what they look like? Yes. Yeah, they're yeah. ugly, huh? Yeah. Beaver essence is used in lots of food products. Oh yeah. The beavers also produce something that makes their uh, pelt waterproof, right? Isn't that why beaver pelts were always so sought after? Because they're waterproof. We'll go with it. We'll go with it. <laughs> sounds sounds good in my book. I mean, there was a huge industry in North America that was based oh, on yeah. trapping beavers and uh, trading furs back to Europe at one time. Yeah, so Mackinac Island, way up north, uh, that's that used to be like a big, big trapping island. Like that's where they had a big trading post and everything. Yeah, there were like guys that just went out into the wilderness and lived as trappers mm -hmm. and um, did that whole deal. I, that would have been fun to be around back then. As long as yeah. you starve to death or get scalped, you were probably good. Always beaver to eat. <laughs> always, always some beaver tail to get after. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. So what's the temperature uh, like there right now? It's 81 today. Uh, this weekend, though, is supposed to be cold. It's supposed to be like 62 on Saturday. As a high? As a high. Yikes. Yeah. But then it's supposed to be in the 80s next week again. So. Gotcha. We're not going to see the 60s here, I don't think, until probably mid-October. Oh, really? Would be my guess. As a high? No. Hell no. We won't see that until oh. January, probably. Hmm. Sometimes in December, but most likely in January, we'll get our first real, man, it's only got up to 60 today, cold front. But that only lasts for a day or two. That's when you need your hoodies. Then you got to have the hoodie. Well, it's always cold out on the water. Even if it's like 70 here and you're out on the water and the wind's blowing a little bit. Yeah. It seems a lot colder than it actually is. Yeah. You know, with the wind chill or whatever. And it's like damp and... Yeah, windy, and it, it everyone's like it doesn't get cold there, but when you're out on the water like that, it, it is cold. Uh, question right there. Um, so it says, are there gobies in Lake Michigan? Yes, there are gobies in Lake Michigan. Um, we catch them a lot when uh, we go perch fishing. I haven't perch fished in a while, but yep. How big do they get? Perch? No, the gobies. Oh, like three, four inches. Huh. Yeah, they're 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 really weird looking fish. 
they're invasive. In fact, when you catch them, I think you're supposed to kill them. Really? I think so. Well, that's like a lot of invasives here. Yeah. I mean, we have so many in Florida. I mean, we have like pythons and tons. That's something I want to do is python hunt, man. I'd like to do that as well. I wanted to do it this year. I was talking about doing it with CJ. Uh, I don't know if you know CJ. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but um, it just didn't work out. The timing didn't work out. I'm going to try to do it with him next year, though. I really think that'd be a lot of fun. Make some python boots. I mean, I don't even care. I just want to catch one and wrestle it a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Someone else can have it. I don't really want it. Oscars. Dude, and that... So, like, the Oscars and the Mayan cichlids, the um, tilapia that live here or not. Yeah. Those are all invasive species. Tilapia are invasive here. Yeah. So, and then They're from can't, Africa. you can't release those back in the just any water it has to be the same exact spot right i mean i don't think you're supposed to release them at all i think you're supposed to dispatch them dispatch them and the same thing with lionfish yep lionfish are also an invasive species that's a a saltwater invasive they're from the pacific and the indian ocean and i've i have only seen one of them ever caught here oh really was that by you or by I I've remember never caught them here, no. no. It's someone else I knew that caught one offshore. So we don't have a ton of them here yet. Um, I think if there's one now, probably 10 years from now or 20 years from now, they'll be everywhere. Yeah. If you go down to the Florida Keys and swim around and snorkel in the water, you'll see them. Yeah. Um, I know that they're like over on, like out of Jupiter. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there are a lot of places. I've heard they're up in the Panhandle as well, up off of uh, Destin and that area. Um, I got a whole bag full of them one time. They're really good to eat. I Uh, heard that. I heard that. Phenomenal. Actually, a captain buddy of mine got them from a shrimper offshore. Mm. He pulled up to a shrimp boat, and they pulled all these lionfish up in their uh, nets, and they just bagged them up, and they traded them like a – whole shrimp bag full of lionfish for like a 12 pack of Bud Light or a a, a Natty Light or something. Sure. So we used to, we used to have shrimp boats here a lot. Like all summer long we would have shrimp boats and we would always carry smokes and we would carry uh, extra beer on the boat to trade with those guys. So a lot of times you could pull up, they'd give you, you know, a five gallon bucket full of shrimp for a, for a 18 pack. Oh. You know, them boys ain't been on land in 20 days. Oh. So you could trade with them pretty easily or a pack of smokes or whatever, you know. Man. Or you could talk to them on the radio and be like, hey, I'm going to be back around here tomorrow. Is there anything I can bring you? Yeah, right. You guys need. And a lot of guys did that. And we'd pull up to them. We'd trade them. They'd push all their shit over the side. And we'd sit there and troll and catch tunas and cobias and all kinds of different stuff. Mm. That'd um, be sweet. Yeah, I mean, it's awesome, but we just don't see them anymore. Um, I yeah. think that – so I'll tell you what happened to them. The When the housing market crashed in 08, yeah. and we had a big recession, that put a lot of those guys out of business. Really? Pretty crazy. Just couldn't and, keep up. And we are also – buying a lot more seafood that is farm raised and from overseas. Yep. So if you, yep. Can, you know, if someone goes to the grocery store and they can buy kind of the same shrimp for $2 a pound less. Yeah. Right. You know, it's not as a, a good a quality product, but Mexico. Yeah. Yeah. Mexico, Mexico, China, uh, Vietnam, like all over the place we get seafood. Yeah. So yeah. when, you, when you guys go to the grocery store, when you go to the fish market, buy USA caught, wild caught. Golf shrimp. Right. Or it could be caught off the East Coast or whatever, but support your local, you know, your your local fishermen, your local farmers, all that shit is very important. I here's what I say. I say just go and get full organic, fresh caught shrimp on real deal or lured in charters. <laughs> that now you're talking expensive organic shrimp. Yeah. I guess organic shrimp would mean they were just harvested 
in the Gulf of Mexico, right? Those are- I, well, so I know I have a, uh, actually one of my first mates this year. He last year he was up in Alaska, and what he would what they would do is they would say that it was um, wild caught, but it was in like a net pen the size of a football field, and they would go out there and either catch them or then just pull it up, and they could literally say it's wild caught because it was raised where. But they fed, but they fed them. Fish. They fed them. Gotcha. Yeah, exactly. They do that with uh, tunas as well and cobias. Yeah. There are fish farms out here in the Gulf of Mexico where they pan up. And cobias are a great species for them to do it with because they grow so quickly. It's probably the same with dolphin, though. They're my my then. Yeah, those might be a little more difficult just because of how that fish is built. Yeah, okay. But they could definitely do that. But I think mahi is so prevalent that they don't really have to farm them sure tunas cobias it's a lot easier to just pen those things up yeah feed them for a year or two years and then harvest them you send a diver down and you pick out which ones you want sure you know yeah it's crazy it really is there was a big thing here a few years ago about um farm raised fish in the gulf so there are obviously like with any kind of topic like that there are different camps that think one thing and the science right. tells you another thing and the uh politicians tell you another thing and of course the guys that want to grow the fish are all on they're like oh yes the yeah whatever happened right because they're making money off of it so they were worried that with these big pens and they have to feed the fish and do all that stuff that it's going to pollute the water Hmm. Just a concentration of like their poo and stuff. That and yeah, yeah, and byproduct like, of concentrating everything in one spot like that. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I can see it, I guess, but you know, so we're not allowed to like fillet the fish and put it in the water anywhere, like at the marina, out on the water, nothing. Yeah, it's illegal. Yeah, it affects it, because the water quality. Well does it i mean because all these fish are going to die eventually right yeah stuff just eats it here yeah that's the thing you guys have crabs and catfish catfish and i mean we have turtles if the catfish are there they will i mean they'll strip a fish carcass in a minute yeah you know i mean there are hundreds of them yeah whatever they don't get the crabs and the little fish and everything gets i mean there's so much and our water is always moving it's like yeah. so like um we have the florida loop current out here off the coast of clearwater um okay. it's, you know sometimes it's 100 miles out or 150 200 miles out but that keeps the water here moving all the time it's basically the, the gulf stream so the yeah. gulf stream starts in the caribbean Mm-hmm. goes up into the Gulf of Mexico, goes around uh, Texas, Louisiana, and then it comes back down to the continental shelf of Florida on the Gulf Coast, which is mm-hmm. a few hundred miles or so out. And then it goes down, it goes through the Florida Straits and all the way up the East Coast, up to the, it turns into the North Atlantic Drift, and it actually warms the climate of Ireland and the UK all because of that right there yep so in the southern uk they can actually grow palm trees huh because of the water from the caribbean that travels that far it's a it's a river basically it's a river inside of an ocean yeah right it travels west to get east yep yep Mm, that's crazy so that really moves the water here plus the tidal flow and all that sort of deal yeah yeah, but yeah, it. Uh, I I guess I can kind of understand, you know, maybe doing it at the marina. I mean, where I'm at, there's like 15 charters, so if we all did it, plus the I mean, fishermen, it's the same thing here. It just it always flushes here. It's just always well, constantly flushing out. But I could see on a lake how maybe that wouldn't be as much of a thing because you guys don't have tides there, right? No, not like by the moon. It like the only. Mm-hmm wave tide that's the only thing we have to yeah do. but you guys don't have like a very consistent um, doesn't fluctuate rise, right rise and fall of water see our water is constantly 
Yeah. Going up and down. Uh, the tide here is usually around three feet. I mean, some places in the world, it's 50 feet. Right. You know, or 20 feet. Or like if you go up to Maine, they have huge tides there. Or Alaska. Or I yeah. think it's that, that um, latitude that you're at. Yeah. So the Gulf yeah. of Mexico is actually a, a weird place because we have four tides a day here. Hmm. Um, we have two high tides and two low tides. A lot of places, like over on the Atlantic, they'll only have two. They'll have a high and a low in a 24-hour yeah. period. So it changes every day 50 minutes later than it was yesterday. So if I have a high tide today at noon, tomorrow it will be at 1250. How, do you watch that a lot? Yeah. The tides? I mean... It, it, for I navigation it purposes? Just, or I watch it purposes? just so I know for fishing purposes. Okay. I watch it just so I know how I think the fish are going to bite because yeah. they're definitely affected by the tide considerably. Sure. Uh, however, like my trips are scheduled for a certain time. Yeah, right, right, right. So we're going to go either way. Right. Because that's just the nature of the beast. Like the fish don't right. bite if you're not out there. Right. You know? Um, yeah. However, that you can really kind of if and it, it really makes a big difference in shore fishing here. Like if you're a snook and trout fisherman or redfish and stuff like that, like those fish are going to probably or tarpon. It's a big deal for tarpon fishing. Those fish are going to bite on a certain tide. So yeah. they bite like, say, on an outgoing tide, if they've been feeding really heavily, then that's really when you want to fish. Yeah. Or sometimes they'll feed on the incoming tide. I'll tell you when all of them stop feeding is when there is no tide movement. So if the tide's all the way high or the tide's all the way low, they stop feeding. It's like break time. And it's yeah. like a light switch. As soon as the water stops, the fish stop biting. That's crazy. You think that's any relation to like pressure? I think it's just water movement. When the water's movement. flowing okay. like that, they have more oxygen going through their gills. They are able to move around easier. Yeah, sure. Use right, the right. water current to move. You know, it, it brings food to them when the water's moving. And then yeah. it's crazy to watch it happen. Like if you're diving, because all the fish will like just kind of start to hang out together. And so now you have these predatory fish hanging out with the fish that they were trying to eat. 20 Two hours prior. prior. Right. Oh, 20 minutes. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's it's really a short amount of time. Like a tide, a slack tide will last for 20 minutes, half an hour, and then it'll start moving again. Hmm. I'll be darned. Yeah. It's, it's pretty weird stuff. And then, so here in the Gulf of Mexico where I live, if the tide's coming in, the current is pushing to the north. Hmm. When the tide's going out, the current's pushing south. So do you have spots then to like go that way or go north south if if yeah well i use that to my advantage as far as right. my fuel burn goes yeah right 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 so if i so if i know it's going to be an outgoing tide in the morning and i got to run 30 miles i'll go south sure and then i use the tide to my advantage it uses less fuel i can go a little faster and then on the way home hopefully if i time the tide right it pushes me back home yeah right 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 yeah we don't we don't have a tide so we our fish are really dictated uh they bite better when it's the pressure's right gotcha so like a high pressure they'll they'll usually do pretty good as long as it's low light high pressure gotcha so but other than that we don't have we don't have movement like that really um, so the, I mean, there are a lot of variables that affect the fishery here. And I think that barometric pressure is definitely one of them. If you yeah. can time it right, where you have a good tide and like a dropping barometer, you know, maybe the day before a storm or the day before yeah. the cold front here, those fish are going to like see the bottom of the boat. Renzi. Yeah. They are, and they know that something's about to happen somehow. Right. And it's got to be the pressure. There's yeah. no other way for them to know that besides pressure change. Yeah. Cause the lion weatherman didn't tell them. Yeah, I mean, they didn't tell us either. <laughs> they told us the wrong thing. <laughs> That's right. But uh, no, it definitely affects all of those things 
combine together like uh if you get like your dowsing rods out yeah <laughs> yeah right, right. all your things right. and um, yeah maybe you'll find them when they're really chewing like that but it doesn't happen every day i know that all right your ears pop yeah i mean you never know if your ears are popping i'd definitely go check it out the fish might be biting yeah, yeah definitely i uh that 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 i i do i do wish we had a little bit of tide action um but we definitely don't i don't know how it would affect us though because we don't have the shrimp because does doesn't that like kick up the shrimp a little bit more or the plankton a little bit more i mean i mean it, everything moves when the water is moving basically yeah okay <laughs> yeah so, yeah. you know, if there's water flow, all the little fish are swimming, all the big fish are swimming, they're all doing their deal. As soon as the yeah. water stops, they just hang out and wait for it to start again. Yeah. It's like a little siesta every day. Yeah. Yeah. They, they get their um, mariachi bands going and there's sombreros mm -hmm. and margaritas and they, aye, 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 aye. Yeah, they have a little party and then... Um, once the party's over, they get back to business. <laughs> yep. Yep. Cool. Heck yeah. <clears throat> Heck yeah. So, um, the gate's here at the dam. So you're on a river. Like, is the river dammed at some point? No, it's actually, so it's called the Black River in South Haven, and it's black on the bottom. So we don't get a good salmon run uh salmon want to spawn every four years in like um sand or gravel right and we don't have that really Ooh, there's so some spots is it mud is that yeah, why it's, it's all flat? mud mud gotcha. muck yeah Topsoil. yeah gotcha. nasty. yeah that's so good. yeah so we don't get the big runs that uh like the port south of us and the port north of us get uh, which is about 17 miles to St. Joe, 18 miles to, to, uh, Saugatuck. Um, sure. so, uh, we don't get the, we don't get the big runs. So a lot of those other rivers get like a big salmon run. I remember seeing pictures as a kid of like my cousins and uncles and stuff that had like, um, like a stringer full of salmon that they caught in uh what river is that the grand river in ohio oh, yeah you heard of that yeah. in ohio in ohio yeah grand river okay yeah we have a grand river in michigan and it's in grand rapids gotcha and uh it starts in grand haven okay so um i think that's why it's called grand but uh that's a huge river for for salmon though but yeah, I haven't heard the, about the one in in Ohio. The one in so in Ohio, they didn't have much of a salmon. They're more like walleye, right? Yeah, but they also have salmon. More towards the east, right? Yes. Yeah. Yep. yep. Over, uh, I know the Cuyahoga River, the Grand River, and I don't even know that those fish are still there. But I know they were yeah. kid, or maybe even before. Before I was a kid because I've seen all the pictures and I'm like holy crap you guys caught that in the Grand River which now like doesn't look like a place you would catch a fish but they're still there I think right you know yeah um I haven't heard of that I I've heard of the mommy the what mommy River where's that Ohio like Toledo area gotcha and they have salmon in that river? No, oh, no, they have walleye in that river. Walleye. Like that's a huge, huge walleye fishery. Like yeah. people go there, come there all over the world just to fish where that river. Where does that go? Where does that go into Lake Erie? Is that Toledo area? I think that connects what's then what's to the like the. Though? There's got to be like a, a harbor. Like the place I fished out of was. Um, the Fairport Harbor. Do you, have you ever heard of that? Mm -hmm. It's basically uh, like, um, 
Painesville, Ohio. Actually, I fished out of Perry a couple times as well. Mm -hmm. Um, I, 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 when those that all the captains and I get together, we go to Oak Harbor. And that's, that's it. it's, I don't know what river that is, but, um, that's a big fishery for walleye. Gotcha. I fished out of Perry a couple times. That there's like a nuclear power plant out there. Okay. Um, and every time I've been, the fishing has been excellent. Yeah. Ooh, I feel like walleye fishing. Exactly. That's it. Uh, I feel like, um, oh, Oak Harbor is the Portage River. I didn't know that. Um, I feel like, uh, the walleye fishery is phenomenal and always has been in in Lake Erie area. It, that's because the lake's more shallow than the other Great Lakes, right? Yeah, it is really shallow. See, so and we don't. There's no way we catch walleye out in south out of South Haven. Ne like never. Nope. This is, this is a hat that Tony sent me. I got it yesterday. Yeah. Carter's. We're wearing each other's hats. We're, there's right. a real romance going on right now. <laughs> Pitter patter. Pitter patter. Let's get at her. <sighs> we run charters out of Western Lake Erie. Very cool, Chris. Um, that's a lot of fun. I've never fished Western Lake Erie. That's way too close to Michigan for me. No, I have fished. Wet, like, uh, I don't have a merch site. I just kind of have merch and people say what they want. I make my own shirts too. As you can tell, I didn't do very well on that guy right there. <laughs> so you have your own, uh, your own shirt making stuff like a press and all that sort of yeah. stuff. Oh, that's yeah. Cool. Yeah. And then I order the hats. <laughs> right. And you do the, the stuff on them. All the yeah. cool. Where'd you get the flag behind you? Um, one of my wife's co-workers' husbands made it. Cool. That's all I know. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. So, it's uh, it's oh not as fancy God. as yours. Cool. We have some, uh, we're going to have some cool stuff coming up here soon. I have not announced it yet, but it's going to be very interesting. Are we, are we announcing it right now? I mean, we might, whenever Heather comes back in, I'll talk to her. She just went out to somewhere, the mailbox or something, maybe. You guys are going to be up in uh, this neck of the woods, right? We are. We're going to be up there at the end of September. We're yeah. doing so much traveling right now. I'm like, oh, my God, at the end of this, I am going to be completely broke. And um, so, so when you were younger... Yeah. I did this as a as a person when I was younger, and I so I've I've it's kind of a weird thing, but I have judged my wealth by the amount of times I have to do this. And sure. so when I was younger, when I was like in my twenties, I would keep like a big uh, a big jar and put all my change in it. And every once in a while, I'd be like, oh, shit, I got to like, <laughs> got to dip into it <laughs> or something. And I would go cash all my change in. Sure. Right. So or I get $10 to, worth of gas. It, right. Or whatever, bro. You know what I mean? Been there. I had to do that in a long time. But I remember having to do that. Oh, yeah. You know, and so I have kind of judged where i'm at in life by that <laughs> which it which sounds really weird but i'm like okay it's been yeah. eight years since i had to cast that freaking change bucket in and uh it's a pretty crazy thing i don't know yeah i think that's part of being young and frivolous with everything yeah i remember when so i'm 40 three yeah i just remember when i was out of high just out of high school i was like oh, i'm gonna go get live on my own well uh -huh. i had the cheapest apartment and uh i was so broke a couple times where i think the ramen noodles were like 15 cents a pack so i that's i lived on those and those and like um uh cheese crackers yeah like a sleeve of oh, yeah. cheese crackers bro i've done it all like 
guys, you know, it's I know it's midnight and the only thing we have to eat in the house. I mean, this is before I had a family and shit, obviously. Right, right, right. Like, let's make some pancakes and uh I got a jar of baked beans and we'll like roll yes. a little chocolate syrup on the pancakes. I mean, you know, it's kind of gross, but you do what you got to do, you know. Yeah. Um so I still keep a change bucket. The last time sure. Heather makes me cash it in every once in a while because she gets mad because she can't pick it up anymore. Yeah, <laughs> and it like like eventually after a couple of years, like it starts to uh, it starts to break and all kinds of crap. So she's like, "We really need to like cash this thing in." And I just take my change at the end of every day and put it in the bucket. Otherwise, like it ends up all over the house and I get yelled at. I uh, I have water like old water jugs. The water jugs are perfect. Like the the clear plastic ones, those are perfect. Yeah, and they have a handle on it. Yeah. 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 I have I have two actually. I have one for straight silver and one for copper. Oh man, you sort it yourself. I do. Yeah. So take that crap to like the Walmart grocery store and start dumping it in yeah. the um little change sorter. And I think they charge yeah. me like eight cents on the dollar. By the end of it, I'm like, oh my god, I just paid them like Thirty dollars to sort my change right. or whatever, but well worth it. Yeah, they make those yeah. little sorters where you can roll it yourself and do all that and take it to the bank. But I'd rather pay the thirty dollars and have someone else do it for me. I guess. I guess that's kind of being lazy, but. Yeah. <laughs> but I feel like I have better things to do with my time than sit there and sort change. Well, now that you have kids, you can be like, "Hey, kids, you want you know, eight I cents on a that. dollar." I could definitely do that, but will they actually do it? Because yeah, right, will, right. You know, I feel like kids nowadays do not have drive. Well, it's not just that they don't understand like the value of money. Right. Well, you know I can't I find I can't find any help for the for the summer. It seems like you know, as a for well, first, yeah. Uh, that has I'm speak, preaching to the choir. Yeah, oh yeah, that has changed a lot. There used to be so when I was when I first started deckhanding, it was hard to get a deckhand job because everybody was on a boat and they stayed there, and they didn't. Right. They were like, you know, and I did the same thing. I like get on a boat and I'm like, well, nobody else is going to be on this boat except for me. Like right. I'll, a little I'll pride fight, in it. Yeah, I'll fight you for my job. Right. You know what I mean? Like I'll fight I'll fight you for the twenty five dollars I'm gonna make today. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. But I was learning something the whole time, you know. Yeah, sure. And uh yeah. paying attention and like trying to do the same thing. I look looked at these guys and I looked up to them and I know that some of the young guys that there are still a few around look up to the older captains and they're like, you yeah. know, someday they're either like someday I'd never wanna be like that asshole or someday Maybe I'll be that asshole, right? You know. Yeah, I, I, it's, it's a struggle. Like I, I finally had a guy that was a teacher at the end of the year contact me. He's like, I'm just looking kind of for something to get me through the summer, not monetarily, but just because sure. I'm bored. Yeah. I'm like, Where have you been all my life? Yeah. So, but I mean, now he's back to school. Like being a deckhand on a fishing boat isn't about making money no you're not going to make much money that's just part of the game that's how it works you're like he like he makes beer money that's right and i mean that's what it is that is the kind of job that it always has been and there just isn't enough money there running a charter for a deckhand to get rich and, yeah. and the owner of the boat, the captain ain't fucking getting rich. Nobody's getting rich fishing. No, not no. people fishing, think, I yeah, you. I know, I know. Pe you know, people, people see what we charge. No. Yeah. I mean, I mean, so I have winter storage and summer storage. I own the dock that I'm in. Uh -huh. So I, I have to pay dues. I have to pay taxes on it. But then summers are, uh, I'm sorry, winter storage is, you know, three grand. Well, and then then you know you you get a thirty thousand dollar fuel bill at the end of the year and you're like you know so people think we make pile of money but we don't especially if you have a breakdown oh, look, I, you know i make i bring in a ton of money right but the time the goes out it goes out faster than i bring it in it's like the more you bring in the more i'm spending the more i bring in 
the more I got to pay in fuel, the more I got to pay for my deckhand, the more I got to pay for maintenance, and the more I got to pay for all, yeah. everything, bait and yeah, yeah. I fuel just, fuel's the biggest thing. We just went down a we just we just went down a rabbit hole, didn't we? We sure did. I mean, <laughs> it it gets deep. Um, oh. So that's the bet, right? Catching Casey said, "Tell him how to become a millionaire." Charter fishing. And that's by starting Don't. with two. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, people see what, you know, I actually, I think my prices are going to go up next year, but. Mine probably are as well, you know. They have you to, gotta, like, otherwise yeah. I can't afford to pay my mortgage and feed my family and do all just the normal things that people are trying yeah. to do. Um, so should we, should we make our announcement or should we wait? I say yes. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm booked to get, but yeah, sure. We should do it, Go right? For it. Yeah, tell them. Are we, is it crazy? I told am, I being, am I being crazy? You are. It's crazy. You sold Rodé. I did tell Rodé. I'll be ding dong. So did I. <laughs> you did? <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell anybody I told you this, Rodé. <laughs> I'm going to talk to my this... buddy Elon. That's hilarious. Okay, so this Monday, right? Yeah. Monday morning. This coming Monday morning, we're flying to New York to meet with people at TikTok oh. at the New York City TikTok headquarters. Yeah. So I got Is this going along with the diamond thing that you were talking about? What diamond thing? Didn't, weren't you talking about some diamond things? Like if you're a this diamond, maybe it wasn't you. Know. Sorry. <laughs> my bad sorry no, go ahead I nothing about the diamond thing i don't know sorry go ahead um no i just got in this like creator program thing they i've been talking to them and i have like i've been doing all these webinars and like a lot of shit behind the scenes that people don't realize yeah, and right. um i got invited to go to new york city to the tiktok headquarters to meet with my creator manager and their team and uh, nice. do that whole deal. So we are going to fly up there on Monday. We have meetings Monday and Tuesday, and we're going to be in New York City for a couple days. I'll be back here Wednesday to do my podcast Wednesday morning, hopefully with the Ocean Bully. And uh, yeah, uh, quite the turn of events. It's going to be pretty badass. I'm excited about it. Yeah. So does that, So that's you're planning on growing that then? Growing what? The TikTok page? Yeah. Well, the... Uh, um agency this has nothing to do with the agency oh no okay well, that's a whole separate deal i am not a i'm not i don't own the agency it's ran by heather i am my own standalone creator on this platform gotcha. um i'm just um you know an advocate for her i can't even be in the damn agency myself it's the real deal agency i'm not allowed to be in it they won't let really? anybody be in it if you made like like crappy guru is not allowed to be in it either. I'm OB might not even be allowed to be in it. I still need to talk to him about it. But if you have, you know, cause I've been on this platform like three years now. Yeah. And over that three years, I've brought in too much, too many diamonds or whatever. Maybe that's where you heard the diamond thing. Yeah. Um, too many coins to be able to be part of an agency. So it's basically the same thing though. So instead of me being in an agency, I'm in, a TikTok creator program. Okay. Creator network. So it's really just TikTok being in, putting me in their own agency. Sure. But my representation isn't through a third party. It's not through an agency. It's through TikTok itself. Mm, that's pretty cool. You know, so I can actually like make a phone call and be like, hey, what's up, buddy? I'm and, and the guy, so the guy, my creator manager is a great guy. I talked to him on the phone, uh, like last week or something. I text him a little bit and stuff like that, but he's actually from Fort Myers. He grew up down there fishing and doing all the Florida things. And so he's like, man, I watched your live stream and it's awesome. And we really need to talk more and yada, 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 you know? Um, so, so that's going to be, that's going to be cool. We're going to learn a lot in the next, uh, next week in the, uh, early part of the week is going to be awesome. So that's the big announcement. We are going to TikTok headquarters next Monday. We're going to be there Monday and Tuesday. That's pretty cool. 
So who knows how that's all going to work out and how it's going to go down. I'm going to be live for a lot of it. And um, yeah, it's an interesting thing. Very interesting. Thing. So what, <clears throat> what, it, what do you think you're going to get out of it? Like the biggest thing that I'm going to get out of it is the same thing that I've gotten out of this, out of running this channel is I am going to network with those people mm -hmm. um, and make more connections in TikTok. That's the biggest Sweet. thing that I'm going to get out of it. Um, I don't know what sort of offer or whatever, how that works out. Right. Um, what I am going to do is write exposure. I'm going to get more exposure for my, for my channel. I'm going to meet other employees um, and, other creators. and other creators that are doing the same thing that I'm doing and people that are actually that want me to succeed, like the uh, people that work for TikTok that want my channel to succeed because obviously, you know, TikTok has something to gain as well as I do out of it. Sure, um, sure. So it's going to be nice to be able to um, just network with those people and actually meet real people that work for TikTok. Well, somebody wants your autograph. I'll be ding dog. <laughs> yeah, I know. All right. So that's one thing, you know, we've talked about it actually multiple times, but like I, it's, it's hard for me to go live when I'm out fishing because yeah, I get of it. how, how my boat's set up. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you're, you're, and it's so weird because if you, if you're running the original, uh, real deal one, uh it's, it's, the same it's kind of thing. hard it's I know. hard i know and i have like this perfect little scenario you do. how i've been able to make it happen and it's very difficult to do it otherwise oh man you know that's like, that you didn't plan on deal, like there's no way i'm gonna be live the entire ride out and the entire ride in and all that maybe for the fishing and stuff like that but that makes all that difficult Right, because yeah. I don't really necessarily like to put the camera in my people's face the whole time. I want them to right. have their own privacy and their own deal. So really the only time I try to put them on camera is when we're fishing. Right, and besides that, like yeah. they're on their own down there, they do the deal, they hang out with the deckhand and that sort of deal. And I don't yeah. want that part to change. Like I right, think right, that's right, like right. a very important part of being able to just go offshore and get away from all that bullshit. Right. Right, you know? right. And I miss that myself about being able to go out outside of cell phone range. And now I'm on my own. I don't yeah. have a cell phone anymore. I can get on the VHF radio and call somebody if I need to or activate my EPIR. But besides that, I'm on my own. Yeah, right, right. I don't get that anymore. I get like I'm always, I always have that leash. Mm hmm. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I can't, I mean, it, if I'm, especially if I'm running by myself, if right. I'm running by myself, then I'm playing, you know, captain. I know. Fish netter, <laughs> uh, first mate, fishing line setter. Oh, yeah. And then, and then also kind of people laugher or comedian. Oh, yeah. You got to be all of those. You know? Yep. Yeah. You got, yeah. So. That's, that's one thing. And we, I mean, we don't really have too many boats that are fly bridge or, or anything like that. Tuna tower. We don't, there's none that have tuna towers up here on purpose anyway. Right. There's one captain out of the 20 in South Haven that has a fly bridge. Right. Yeah. I, I, that makes sense up there. I mean, honestly, it makes sense here to not have one yeah because you're not looking for fish right well sometimes like, but we're not like out like actively searching for tunas or something like that right. um so me riding up top on that boat's kind of a pain in my butt because it is a lot more rocky up there than it is down below oh yeah oh yeah so there's that part of it it has however provided me with a perfect platform to be able to do this yeah yeah you know, so that part of it's been great for the most part. Um, the Starlink's been great. Like, that was a good decision 
all my people tried to talk me into it for like a year and a half before I actually did it. Yeah. You know, see, we're never out of cell phone range. I mean, we're, if, so we can, we can be offshore about 10 miles before we start losing cell phone. And I don't ever want to be out that far. Cause that means I'm in like probably 350 foot of water. Once it's over it's about just, six foot, it's all the same. For you, not me, right? No, what do you mean? the past six feet of water, it's over my head anyway. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, and I'm not worried about it. Yeah. <laughs> Whether not, it's a thousand not... feet or six feet, it's the same thing. Yeah, no, 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 no. I'm just saying for cell phone range. Yeah, I'm... yeah. yeah. How far is you get cell phone about 10 miles there? Yeah. Yeah. Huh. That's about the same here. 12. Now you can't live stream though, like at 10 or 12. Yeah. Like it gets really choppy. Up. Or even making a phone call. You know, it doesn't yeah. work very well. You can get some text messages through and stuff like that. I'm sure it's the same there. Yeah. It's all, yep. all those cell towers are just line of sight. Yeah, exactly. You know, once you go um, over the edge, you don't get yeah, that. Yeah, over signal. the edge. That's right. <laughs> I, see, I, see, I see what you did there. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I, I would never need Starlink per se. I thought, I, so a couple of years ago, what I did, actually, I'm on it right now, but I had an iPad. I still have it, but I had an iPad that had um, cell phone service to it. Sure. And I would set that up to where people could, like, especially kids that, are like really antsy and need yeah, to watch yeah, play their little games or watch. Something. Yeah. Yeah. And then I'll, I could offer like, Hey, I have Wi-Fi, and I would just hotspot it. Oh my God. You know what I could do on damn. I need to get my generator going. <laughs> yeah. Cause then I could have TV. Right. We can watch football games while I was, while we're fishing. Right. Like I could totally mount a TV on the outside of the boat. Yeah. Like on the back yes. deck and we could sit there and fish and watch football at the same time. Can you imagine what that would do to your, like if you were able to offer that? That's amazing, right? Yeah. I think that helped me a little bit. You know, I, it, people always ask, do you have Wi-Fi? No. I mean, come on, you're out fishing. Do yeah, you need yeah. Wi-Fi? I haven't yeah. really got into that side of it before. Um, it, like trying to sell the Wi-Fi to the customers. Like we yeah. just did that at first. Um, I haven't really had many ask me about it. And the ones that have, I just gave them the, the thing. Um, we've talked about doing that to... Re um, re for revenue? Yeah, just to create another... Okay. Yeah, sure. but... Um, we haven't really done that yet, so I'm not sure how that's all going to work out. I'm sure we're going to have some sort of a plan eventually. It was really yeah. like when I got it, I mean, really not that many people, nobody that I know of has done what I did. Yeah. Like the first charter boat that really had Wi-Fi. There were a few guys that I know personally that used it a few times on their boat, but it wasn't like a permanent thing. Yeah. Um. You know, and I attached it permanently and I'm like, okay, we got Wi-Fi now and figured all that out. And uh, it, it's been really good. It's been, uh, it's been different. You know, it's, it's something different. It's, uh, it's new. Did you go to unlimited then? I do not have unlimited that. That's a lot. Is it? Yeah, it's a lot. Cause I know at first you were like burning through it and you're like, ah, I've got to do something different. It. It's crazy. Like my yeah. goal so far, I have at least broke even. Okay. In the month. So sure. So that's good. As long as I break even, it'd be nice to like actually make a little bit off of it eventually. Sure. <laughs> you know what I mean? But right. for the most part, I broke even. We'll see how the subscriptions go. Like I think in the slower season where I'm not using it as much, I'll, yeah. I'll maybe bring a, have a little profit there. Yeah, sure. But I might use that to like maybe buy another Starlink for my small boat or buy another one for the other boat. Like I'm really trying to get DJ to 
uh, and he wants to as well. He like has the ambition to do it. So yeah, I was just going to ask, does he want to? I think that he does. Yeah. And I, I'm really trying to like, you know, he's kind of like a rough rock. Yeah. And he needs to be polished up a little bit around the edges in order to be successful at it, I think. And I, you know, I was the same way when I started, I got freaking bananaed over and over and over again. And so right. I heard like, you know, exactly what I was and not allowed to say. <laughs> so we need to put him in like the rock tumbler and get him a little bit more polished and he's going to do really well at it. Good luck. Cool. I know. I know, Lister. I know. But, uh, but he, he has the, he has the ambition to do it. Sure. You know, so I think if the ambition and the motivation are there, we can work with all the other stuff and figure it out. Even if it's not, I mean, there are other platforms that possibly might work for him as well. Uh, he, he's a kind of a younger guy, isn't he? He's, he's in his late thirties. Okay. Yeah. All so right. he's not like a baby. Right, 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 right. Okay. You know, I just, I, I'm not technically savvy. Blue eyes, that's right. Blue eyes says he needs mods that he won't listen to. Yeah. Good luck. Uh, I think yeah. I'm, I really need to talk to him. I'm going to be one of his mods. Heather is, we're going to try to get him dialed in with it. I actually talked to him this morning about it. I was going to meet with him here this morning, but then I drove, I had to go. I, so I met with Rob, Rob K's cousin. I don't know if you guys see Rob K in here every once in a while. Um, he actually gave me a couple fishing rods. Um, <laughs> His cousin drove them down here from Ohio last night. I just went down and met him in Palmetto. I took him some fish. Oh, um, nice. He's like, I'm having a fish fry. Do you have any fish? I'm like, hell yeah, I'll pick you up, bro. So I took him some uh, grouper and some uh, grunts and hogfish and stuff like that that I just had vacuum sealed in the freezer and dropped that off, picked up a couple of fishing rods. And, uh, you know, I thought it was really cool because he was like, these were my dad's fishing rods. And oh, really? He would really tickled me to death if I could see this live stream with one of my dad's old fishing rods being used to catch something, you know, so that's like, cool. That's kind of cool. Yeah. You know? So now you have a goal. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, it's going to happen. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, no, I that's thought cool. that was really cool. So I'm like, yeah, man, I'm on board with that. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah. This um, is was his dad originally down here or no? Uh, yeah. Yeah. His dad's okay. from down here somewhere and then they moved up there, but it's like gotcha. all his dad's old fishing equipment and that kind of gotcha. deal. Um, that's going to be awesome. You know, I can't wait to do that. I might, I mean, that's probably going to happen this weekend. I mean, some of your fishing rods, you there, you have pretty big fish and you need broomsticks basically. Oh yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Like, um, like when we were shark fishing the other day, we're yeah. using, you know, like Litster had a rod there with like a six out, one of those Penn International six outs on it. Yeah. And I got like a couple, you know, they're basically broom handles. Man. You know, if, if you get a small person on one of those that don't know what they're doing, they'll yank you right in the water. Have you ever had that? I personally haven't. I have seen someone get yanked off of a boat before. <sighs> yep. It, it definitely happens. I saw a girl get yanked off of a boat um, right off the beach. I was out there in my canoe uh, tarpon fishing. I was probably 16 or 17 years old. And there was a charter boat that pulled up and they were trying to catch a Goliath grouper. There's like a little artificial reef there. And uh, he, they put their bait in the water. And I see this girl on the back deck. She's got the fishing rod. And all of a sudden this thing hits and wham, right in the water. Just yanks her right off the boat like that she didn't have she wasn't leaning back i i don't think she looked like she was about 80 pounds i don't know if she mm. could lean back that hard yeah <laughs> she wasn't strapped in she should have been strapped in yeah that that was uh that was had to be a big fish but she got yanked off the boat they got her back in the boat but they i think they lost their fishing rod sure uh they opened up uh, Goliath season down there, didn't they? Ridiculous. There, it's like there's a slot size. There's only fifty yeah. bags for the entire state. There's a slot size, 
It's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. I would never apply for that. It's like fifty dollars for a tag to keep some slot size grouper. I, I don't get it. Those but things are over every wreck out here. Like I was gonna say, there's a pile of them. Like there's a ton of them. Oh yeah, it's mismanaged. It's like a lot of things. The government. How often do you have uh, FWC on on your boat doing because? Oh, doing like the survey Fish count. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they uh, yeah, I'd say once a month or something. I don't know. They call me occasionally, and I'm like, yeah, sure, come on. Sure. Uh, so how does that how does that work? If you had six people, then they can't go, or do they turn it? I mean, that's Coast Guard, so they. Well, it's FWC, so it's not Coast Guard. No, no, no. I know, but I, I'm sorry. That's what I meant to say. It's not. It's not Coast Guard, so. Yeah, no, it's illegal to take them. So we're allowed to carry two deck hands, right? As I long as they have. Possibly consider that if the FWC stops you and there's a biologist. Are they going to write themselves a ticket? It's or... a gray area. Well, they're going to write me a ticket. It's not going right. to be a biologist, right? It's right. Be the captain. The, cap right. the Coast Guard could potentially <clears throat> escort you back to the landing. And yeah, I mean, some sort would of FW... I think that could probably happen from the Coast Guard, just because the Coast Guard and the FWC are different entities. The Coast Guard right. is the federal government, Homeland Security, right. or whatever they're ran by now, and right. FWC is like state law enforcement. Right, FWC just like our DNR. Talk to each other a little bit, but they are following... They are enforcing different rules, basically. Yeah. You know, so... I don't know what the Coast Guard would do about that. I won't do that, though. If I have six passengers, I try not to take the FWC people. I mean, the FWC people still have to be in the drug uh, lottery system, drug con consortium program, right? The biologists? Like, Hell no. No, if you're no, if you're going to take them as crew. I you Yes, you would think so. Yeah, so that's a gray area, too, right? I mean, that is a gray area. Yep. And I've seen that enforced before. Oh, I bet. And yeah, I've seen it not enforced before too. So who knows? Yeah. They, they can kind of pick and choose what they decide to enforce. And I think a lot of times the Coast Guard, they will have certain things that they're looking for when they're stopping vessels. Like yeah. this, you know, in the next couple months, we're really gonna hammer on the safety equipment. Sure. And then they'll change it to, oh, let's look for turtle gear or let's look at their bilge and see if they're pumping oil over the side or whatever it may be. Um, mm -hmm. I think they really hone in on one thing a lot of times like that. So they'll look sure. at the other things, but that's really what they're looking for. Yeah. You know, so the drug consortium thing, that has been something that they have looked at in the past on my vessel. Um, I, so when I first started running the boat, I went out and I didn't carry my, I didn't have my federal reef permits on the boat. I didn't have my drug consortium paperwork on the boat. I didn't have any of that shit on the boat. I had it at home. So right. they stopped me like 30 miles offshore. I don't have any of the stuff on the boat. And they're like, well, we need an email address or something we can contact. Like someone someone on land now to be able to find this stuff or we're going to have to make you go back so um so they did that um and you know they emailed heather heather had to copy the or, or scan and, and email them the shit back and it all worked out but it was like a hassle for like an hour of trying right to them offshore yeah uh we we don't have a Coast Guard station. We're in our port, sure. but they're in a oh, yeah. different, right, 18 miles away. Gotcha. And um, they, they, but they visit all the time and oh, yeah. we haven't been pulled over, but I get, I get pulled uh, for my random drug screening probably at least two times a year. Yeah. Well, at least one time a year, every once in a while, I'll get two times, three times. At least once a year. You never know what it's going to be. They like send you the email or whatever, and you're like, yeah, oh, they'll do this here in a minute. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's part of it. If you want to be a captain, you, yep. you got you to yep. be smart. You do. 
I'm not convinced that ours is random. Litzer, it's probably not. It's definitely not. It's the same thing with us. We're in a consortium, and I don't think it's random either because I know captains that have done – I get pulled way more. Right. Litzer, that's exactly right. I know captains that get pulled way more than everyone else, and then I know some that have like, oh, it's been five years. And I'm like, what the f- – like, yeah right was like yeah you got me like twice a year for the past 10 years and you're yeah you haven't had it in five okay yeah so i mean that's the thing that's just part of it you know if you want to be a captain you got to play by their rules it's just like uh anything else you do in life if you want to be um if you buck the system it ain't gonna work out well for you yeah you know yeah i heard that but I mean, if it was easy, then everybody would do it. If it was easy, everybody do it, buddy. That's right. That's fishing so, for you. <laughs> that's right. Or just being a captain. I mean, or 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 tugging like. Right. Yeah. Heard that. <laughs> cool. Okay. Well, I think we're we've been on here for like two hours. I think we're probably drawing to an Love end. It. All right. Sounds good. Um, it was a pleasure to have you on, Tony. I'd love to yeah. have you again sometime. Yeah. And uh, uh, honestly, I'll I'll see you, you know, in in the chat and the Discord and doing the deal. I hope uh, your family's well. We're all good. And uh, you guys have a, a great uh, winter season. Fall season, I guess, is coming up, right? Yeah, I don't – I mean, like I say, I pulled a boat. Uh, I'll probably actually pull it early this year. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the same thing that you do. I'm going to scrape the bottom, paint the bottom, and that way I don't have to do it in April or March when it's five degrees below oh, yeah. zero. You didn't get all the fall decorations out for the wife yet or what? No. That's happening soon. Very soon. Uh, is she is she watching this? No, I don't think so. I told her to. I think, but <laughs> she's lucky. at work. You're Actually, lucky. she might be she might be on lunch now and she might she might she might. I'll be ding dong. I just made you do work. Okay, so yeah uh, right thanks heather wants me to do all that maybe this afternoon we'll see but um okay it was awesome talking with you tony uh, yeah same great show it was a pleasure to have you on yeah likewise yeah nice. always, i'm glad to be here to, to talk with you and all that kind of stuff so um we'll see you next time all right sounds good buddy yes sir you have a great we'll day see you yeah you too bud